Okay, perfect. So yeah, developing the secure and resilient MSP of tomorrow. Um, or don't sell firewalls any longer. <laughs> Maybe some catchy uh, yeah, sentence and let's see what is this about. So when we're talking about resilience, um, of, of an MSP in the future. I found this slide uh, about today's uh, MSP uh, business and the future, how it can look like. And um, there are some changes uh, coming up and I think an, a business model of an MSP can be resilient if we um, yeah, take advantage of those um, potentials of, of the future that we can see here. And just to pick some, um, I think one element is quite important. It's the second one here. I like this uh, a lot. It is the infrastructure focused um, MSP nowadays. And in the future, if you want to be successful and if you want to have a resilient business model, then uh, this study says that you need to focus on infrastructure and application. And, um, and I think uh, for a lot of infrastructure and security uh, focused um, MSPs, that's a little bit like, mm, oh, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm not so much into the applications. I'm probably cross industry. I, I don't have a specific industry focus. And um, so that's why I see a lot of applications every day of my customers. But maybe you can start, um, um, yeah, earning more knowledge on, for example, a, a specific industry. Um, maybe you have already some customers in this industry, and then you are, um, no, uh, yeah, you learned about the software that um, this kind of uh, businesses are using, and so you get better on this. Um, and the idea is that in the future, it is very important to to be a business partner, like a consultant um, that is um, yeah, um, on an equal footing uh, to, the, to, the MSP, uh, to, the, to the CEO or yeah, to the MD of, an, of a company that you are servicing. Um, and it's not uh, so much about bits and bytes, it's more about understanding why he's using the IT uh, what he is doing with it, why it is so important, which elements are really important, what kind of interfaces are there between the uh, different applications. So a real picture, maybe like a virtual CIO, maybe that's a better um, idea of how um, uh, the, the, f the future of an MSP, uh, in my opinion, will, will look like. And I think if, if we are able to make this change from this blue arrows to the green arrows, then um, I think we, that's, then we get to the resilient uh, MSP status. Yeah. Um, I don't want to read out all of these elements. Um, I think that was one important one and the other ones you have probably already seen. So let's get into another way to take a look at resilience of, um, of, of MSPs. And that's why I'm referring to uh, the decision of which service concept um, uh, IT service company will um, use or yeah, will focus on and the consequence of the enterprise value of such an IT company. So we have the different levels here, uh, level one, break, fix. And one important factor of the valuation is um, yeah, the contract value that um, this IT company has, let's say, uh, yeah, collected um, over all their customers. Um, and in the break, fix model, the, there, will, there are no contracts. So the contract value is zero. So the business valuation, there's a question mark. And then the, the, the level two um, service hours, uh, you are um, yeah, selling block hours to, to customers, maybe 10 hours a month. And maybe you're giving uh, a discount uh, because he's, yeah, he, he agrees to have 10 hours each month or even 20, whatever. And those, uh, yeah, this level has the advantage that, there's a contract, the contract that says 
I will have these 10 hours uh, a month, uh, no matter if I'm using them, but I will pay for them. And so that's a value. Um, the, the contract value of such a contract you can calculate. And here are some, um, yeah, some values that I have seen in the past years um, in the MSP world. Sometimes you can be lucky and you get even more than 0.5. Maybe you can get to yeah, one time of the contract uh, uh, value. So it's, I don't want to be too picky on the single numbers. It's more about the consequences and the idea behind it. So, and then the next level is the level three, proactive service. So normally you will use monitoring tools or you will um, use proactive maintenance or maybe you visit um, the customer regularly. So in this level, you will find out something is wrong the um, the service which is then needed that maybe the change or um, yeah some service need afterwards that will be invoiced by worked hours and then that's the difference to the level four and five uh, where you are uh, delivering your services um, as an MSP um, all include all inclusive or flat rate and in in this case. Um, the result of, of a maintenance um, or a proactive alert that has um, come up, that is then invoiced on a fixed rate to the customer. It's not um, been invoiced by a worked hour. So that's why I have put a, a big line, um, not that big, but uh, I have used this line to uh, separate uh, the uh, yeah, time uh, is money. Uh, area you have level one to three and yeah working for a fixed service of level four and five and you can see that um, the consequence is that the contract uh, oops <laughs> a little bit too fast the, yeah the contract value it goes up in those managed service levels um, yeah the reason is Technicians get more and more expensive. You need a lot of time from them in level two or three. In level four and five, you can uh, use automation. You can use better processes, better processes, and those will help you to produce the managed service with less efforts. And yeah, that drives valuation, as you can see here in these uh, tables. Yeah, maybe a strategic view on and so with what kind of IT company uh, is more resilient? I think uh, the level four and five, as we can see, if something maybe like something bad, like yeah, in this year, um, probably um, MSPs of level one, two, three are more um, uh, yeah, negatively impacted in, in comparison to the level four and five um, MSPs. So maybe this high level view here, uh, a beautiful picture. Oh, I don't know, I don't, didn't. So this beautiful picture, then to sum it up here, the level one break and fix person, then the blog hour specialist. And here you can see the managed service provider. Uh, so instead of numbers and columns, uh, a nice picture. So, um, a little bit about me, those who don't know me yet. I'm an MSP person. I started an IT service provider company in 1996 here in, in, in Germany. And um, after some years, so in, in this business, we were um, uh, focusing a lot on managed services, managed security services, hosting services for our customers. So we were sending out monthly invoices a lot and other MSPs or other IT companies in Germany asked me if I can help them to, um, yeah, to build a, a service business, a managed service business, especially. So um, that was then uh, the time when I started Acmeo. It's a, it's a spin-off out of this MR company. And uh, yeah, that is an MSP and cloud only distributor in DACH, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And since two years, we are now part of the Infinite Group and 
this yeah that's why i'm now in charge of msp for whole europe so for the uk as well i'm for me it's quite important to help um, the msps or msps to be um, in, in in the uk um, in regards to msp services for it security and it infrastructure yeah another beautiful picture <laughs> It's about feel good hardware. And let's just step into the uh, feet of a MDE um, of a um, yeah, mid sized company, maybe whatever, let's say 100 employees, 100 IT users. Um, and they, uh, he, he walks into his server room and it looks like that. So on the left side, there's a yeah, networking rack. Um, there are a lot of fiber, I think it's fiber, yeah, fiber optics cables. And I think it looks very nice, doesn't it? So when I see pictures like this, I'm, I'm, I'm very satisfied. So symmetrical, uh, very, very beautiful. Unfortunately, it's, it's not a, a picture I, I took myself. It's a photo I found on the internet. By the way, if you want to look at uh, pictures like that, um, um, the the word you need to put into Google is um, a cable porn. <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, let's assume, and uh, right next to this, right next to this networking rack, there's this server rack, and it looks very beautiful as well. Um, the uh, the color tone of of all the LEDs are uh, so, in, it's in a row, same color very professional and now let's assume that this one is the firewall the firewall um, it's it's blinking it's uh, it's doing its service um, maybe you can hear a sound of the of the fans and um, yeah this uh, md he will be very satisfied with his it and he will see okay it's a very professional it that i have built so i feel safe i feel very safe against all uh, ugly things that are going on in the internet. And um, yeah, I don't need to explain this to you, um, that this is probably not the best way of looking at it. It's, um, it's a perception. It's probably not the, yeah, not the best idea to take a look at this. Um, but uh, yeah, I think as humans, we can understand why he's uh, uh, thinking about like that. So if we, uh, Let's say techies uh, talk to each other, then it's clear that that this has no meaning about the uh, uh, security of this IT system. And um, so the customer wants to have an IT, uh, a secure IT system. So what can we do to do this? Oh, I, I'm 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 looking at the uh, chat questions. <laughs> I only have four cables on my desk, and even then, that's a mess. I I totally get your point. Yeah, I I feel the same. <laughs> uh, um, so our customer feels safe, and that's wrong. So what can we do that our customer feels safe, and that he's right, so that he can. Uh, yeah, that uh, this perception is right. So in our MSP business uh, in the past, we decided that we will not sell any firewalls anymore because a, a firewall that a customer just buys from us and puts into his nice uh, server rack, it doesn't help him. It's just uh, consuming power, um, but it w won't probably help in um, delivering or maintaining a secure system. So what we decided then is, we need to give some love, let's say, to the to the firewall. So regularly, we need to we need to check the policies and rules that have been um, integrated or have been configured. Um, we need to think about the documentation. Or we should, from time to time, talk to the customer whether um, all the rules and policies, for example, are correct. If if they make sense and if it if this part X Y Z needs to be open. Uh, we should back up the configuration. We should do maybe a high availability test. So maybe we remove one uh, DSL um, 
a cable and see whether the other the second firewall takes over um, and so on. So uh, these services and then we decided that we will put all these services into a package and, and put the firewall, the hardware let's say, then the software of the firewall and our services, we put it into one package and then deliver this as a managed firewall to our customer and that's then the moment when he uh, should feel safe. If he's uh, buying this from us, then then it's fine to, to feel safe. So how can something like this, uh, that look in in the real world, let's say, and this is a uh, this is a managed firewall concept, how it could look like. It's like uh, basic standard premium uh, level. And uh, we are, we have some monitoring of the firewall. There are, there's a protection level dis described. But don't mix this um, with a um, feature set of, of, a, of a firewall. This is a, it's a, this is a service which you can see when we take a look, especially at those elements here, like um, be biannual update of the documentation, peri periodically changing the administration Traitor password. Yeah, <laughs> this is a very good example of something which will never happen if you don't have um, a contract like like that. That this is that this um, assures the customer that uh, this is actually been done. And um, yeah, if as an MSP you are selling such a service to your customer, then you will probably have a PSA or a ticketing system that will help you. That will remind you. Uh, will remind your technicians to actually do this. There are some checklists then behind, so that the quality is okay. So in the end, I think you can feel it's a, there's a good quality of um, of this service that is delivered to your customer, and then he will have a fixed monthly amount that he's paying, um, that includes the hardware, the, uh, the the service, and so on. So maybe something like that um, will help you. Maybe you tell me, you know, Henning, we are doing this since years, so. Good morning. Um, yeah, um, so if you are already using such a concept, then you know how much effort it, take, it takes to, to build something like that up. So maybe in future we can help you by delivering up-to-date um, new ideas of managed services. That is something uh, we offer at Infinigate to yeah, make your life easier. Yeah, and um, then behind those uh, numbers that you have just seen, you, there is a service description. And I think this is a very important. This is very important if, again, if we are talking about a resilient MSP, um, the MSP will have, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, it, it will help to have clear descriptions. And um, because in this case, um, uh, a customer, it's it's a lot harder for him to to ask for um, to ask for let's say one hundred thousand pounds to because a patch that you should have installed was not installed, and that's why a virus or malware has been in your system and has uh, created a lot of, lot of damage, and then he. Uh, yeah, you don't want the person who pays this damage. So this is why it helps to have such a description um, so that it's clear what are we actually delivering, what is uh, we needed from the customer and, and what is the service level that we uh, assure. And um, yeah, just to give you an example here, uh, from my experience, um, this is the most important text you can have uh, when you have a contract relationship with your customer. Um, you will probably not um, uh, argue on, on GDPR or uh, maybe not even the time of the, um, uh, the period of, of the contract or when you have be able to cancel the agreement and so on. It's mostly what was uh, the accept uh, expectation of the customer. What is uh, what is the quality and what is the service he's, he gets and uh, what was the uh, service that you promised? Yeah, maybe this is an element that can help you. And then uh, what um, is another another one is a calculation table. So how, as an MSP or MSSP, how do you calculate this service? Here, in my I, I still stick to my uh, example of the firewall. We have. Um, 
templates for not just a firewall, but for endpoints and for a lot of uh, additional security services. But here you can see how you can then calculate it. And um, yeah, what is the architecture? You have an order form, uh, then you have those service descriptions you've just seen. Um, sometimes we have uh, license terms of the suppliers or service providers behind it. And then there is some, uh, yeah, T and C is like terms of the service. And uh, uh, that's, in my opinion, a, a good architecture of, um, yeah, if you want to uh, agree on a managed security service with your customer. Um, so if you might find this helpful, I'd like you to invite to invite you to our portal, it's the msp.infinigate.co.uk, and you can find an online training. Um, if you are a professional and you know all the uh, bells and whistles of managed security services, no problem. You will have probably people in your company that are not on the same level like you. So maybe you want them to get in touch with virtual me, <laughs> uh, with my video. Um, there's a, uh, that you can find 10 modules here about how to, um, how to yeah, define and how to sell them. It's especially it's uh, on sales, um, methods and um, yeah, how to package those services to be successful with your customer. And all the templates you've just seen, they are included in this price. I think it's, it's a very, it's a friendship price, isn't it? <laughs> and I think the value is a lot higher. Okay, uh, what else you can find in, in, in this portal? Uh, we are helping you sending your invoices by um, letting you know in consumption uh, models, what has changed. Now you get a big invoice, 20 pages or whatever uh, of, of, of used services of, let's say, Microsoft 365 or email security service, whatever. And in this one, you can see, you can analyze what has changed. So in, uh, at which customer consumption has gone down and where it has gone up and what kind of why uh, it has happened. So uh, your accounting team can save a lot of time. This is the portfolio of the um, Infinigate UK MSP, so the MSP portfolio for Infinigate UK team. And um, maybe you find, maybe you didn't know that um, those services are offered as MSP services for you. So that's why I've put it here. Maybe you find it helpful and want to uh, try some of those services. Yeah, and now I am open for questions. On, on cables, on <laughs> MSP. Uh, maybe we have some more minutes to maybe even discuss a little bit about the future of the MSPs. Mm -hmm. Let's Perfect. see. Well, um, thank you very much, Mr. Meyer. We, we, we have a question, um, I guess it's more like uh, related to one of your previous slides about the, the, the co collaboration with Infinigate. What has the collaboration with Infinigate done for Acmeos services? Um, maybe you covered that, but I, but I thought we'd uh, highlight it from James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So um, I, I started the Acmeo business. You can still see here my email domain, acmeo.eu. And um, Acmeo is, is nowadays a daughter company of the Infinigate group. So we are the MSP powerhouse, you could say, of Infinigate. And as uh, uh, Infinigate is a brand that is known in the UK and Acmeo is not, we decided to use the Infinigate MSP brand. So um, the elements you have just seen, so the portal, our templates, and our knowledge and, and help and support, that is now available to all UK partners of Infinigate and um, yeah, uh, partners to be, let's say, uh, of Infinigate. Perfect. Now uh, I, I recognize some of some of the um, some of the templates uh, from previous presentations, so that's that's really good. Um, you, you mentioned the MSP of the future. Um, one of the topics for this uh, event, I suppose, is uh, looking at the SMSP versus the MSS. In in in, in that. Uh, uh, you know, people come from different backgrounds to set both types of companies up. Uh, do, 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 do you think that uh, debate or rivalry is, is, is over um, now? Now everyone's sort of working remotely um, or, or, or will we still see that uh, dynamic between the MSP that tries to offer security services and the MSS that is 
evangelistically security related. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, so we are arguing a lot within Infinigate <laughs> if MSP or MSSP is the right word. And you know, Infinigate is a security uh, distributor um, and uh, it's very focused, very focused on, on security. So they wanted me to um, put MSSP and <laughs> I said, Come on, guys. Let's let's use MSP. So, in my opinion, MSP is just a subset of uh, MSP, um, uh, and it is if you if if you are uh, a um, security only uh, uh, company. So, if your MSP business or your IT company only is offering um, security services, maybe you might want to um, use MSSP. To make it make it clear, um, in what I have seen out there is that the word MSP is is widely used, um, is, uh, yeah, especially in in security uh, companies as well. So, for example, for example, Barracuda is using the term Barracuda MSP, and I think we would uh, see Barracuda as a true security company. And so on. So okay, maybe that was just on the words. Um, if you, if your interpretation of um, of MSSP is that you are um, offering a SOC, for example, SOC service of of people that work um, 24/7 around the clock, uh, looking at the security events of of their customers, and then uh, do what is what is needed. Whereas an MSP uh, in this narrow interpretation, maybe is more focused on NOC services like networking, service infrastructure. Um, then this might be uh, uh, then the difference. And for me, an MSP is, is, is uh, needs to offer security services uh, as well in a very good quality level nowadays. If if he wants to have an yeah resilient business model for the future. I like it, and that's a, that's a very positive note. Uh, do do you think that's that's become more uh, the case uh, recently, uh, or, or, or or has it has has it always been the way? So the word MSSP has been more prevalent, uh, in my opinion, as people, especially from those companies that are offering true SOC services, they want to, um, yeah. Uh, they want to differentiate against other companies and uh, that makes sense and if, maybe um, if you're focused on, on, on this kind of service you should uh, use this term. I think on the long term uh, we will see a lot of MSP around there. Perfect, perfect. Well I like it and uh, this, is, this is a great uh, you know, window into into this into this world. Um, it, it's great to have you here. I know I know um, you're very much in demand, so it's great that you've been able to uh, come here. And I I hope to be able to see you in person in Munich uh, next year, um, if not if not elsewhere in Europe, because now you're looking after Europe. That's right. Yes, I'm looking forward to this as well, and oh. especially getting in touch with other um, security specialists and MSPs, because uh, I like to learn each uh, time when I'm on your conferences. Lovely. Well, well, thanks for all your support. I, I know you, you've been you've been helping uh, a, a long time, and and, and and I'm very very grateful. So, um, uh, uh, Mr. Heddingmeyer, thank you very much. Let's give uh, a, a, a round of applause. Uh, <laughs> thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll start off. Thank you, and I'll, I'll I'll see you in the audience, and um, I'm looking looking forward to welcoming you again. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. Perfect. Um, and we did mention sock. And we did mention knock. And so what we're going to do now is invite uh, uh, back to the stage um, uh, Nigel Gibbons uh, to talk through our next topic, which is very, very key. Um, Nigel, uh, nice, nice to welcome you back. Uh, we're now going to expand on that uh, SOC topic and ask, you know, what will the managed SOC of the future look like if we continue in this remote working environment? Um, I'm uh, I'm just uh, going to bring our panelists up on the stage, uh, but uh, but grateful grateful for your for your thoughts. Yes, I think it's going to be an exciting 